Oh, this is actually really nice. This is right inside. And right here in the front, get the Wild Things gift shop. I'm gonna go and see about a hat. All right, so I did find some hats. This is the adult hat they got. Twenty four ninety five. So here is the zoo map. Not a super big zoo, but they do have a good variety of animals. Hey everybody, Tom here for Tom's Road Trip, and I am up in Des Moines, Iowa. And today I'm visiting the Blank Park Zoo. You see, I am wearing the hat that I got at the gift shop right at the entrance. Not a huge property. I did show you the map right at the entrance. Uh, they do have a good variety of animals. I'm looking forward to this. This is my first time in Iowa. Did lots and lots of driving yesterday to get here from my home state of Florida. Excited to be here. So let's check this place out. I do have some information in the front about the rhinos. Right, from the main entrance, you got the Discovery Center. We got a nice aquarium tank here. I'll see the other fish we will see in here. Side. Like in the woods. Our first to be come to is Red Panda. Always enjoy the pandas. It's a red panda habitat. Now please keep in mind the zoo literally just opened. So if I do not see the critters out first thing, I will most definitely come back multiple times. You see their opening is open to their behind the scenes evening habitat. So it looks like the habitat's all ready for the animal. Get some plants. They got their, their food biscuits. So I will come back a little bit later. But yeah, I really like this, this entry area. All the trees and the rocks. We got white tree frogs. Some birds in here. So free flight aviary in here. All right, some of the birds we'll see in here. We got crested pigeon, Nakabar pigeon, silver-eared messiah. Pink pigeon, hooded pita, pheasant pigeon, white cheek turco, ring teal, and Victorian crown pigeon. So lots of pigeons. And they got a waterfall. This is what the pigeons looks like. The bridge goes over the water. That's a pretty looking bird right there. Very pretty 
scary looking bird. Just walking along. Don't mind me. It's called a David and Dolores Wallace Tropical Trail. Got a three-handled tailed skink. Got one of them right here. It's hard to tell if there's more in here because of the reflection on the glass. It's really nice in here. There's several full-size trees also. Let's try and look up, see if I see any other birds. This very colorful looking bird I saw walking around is a chicken pheasant. I was told his name is Chicken. We got a green iguana named Maki. Ooh, that's a big iguana right there. That look he's giving me. Giving me the look. You looking at me? Yes, I am. Big long iguana tail. That's got a good sized habitat. Got a wama python. It's had a double sided habitat. Oh, there we go. Well, I see a snake right here. Kind of underneath the rock. Oh, wait. Ooh, another even bigger waterfall over this side. Ooh, got Egyptian fruit bag. Catfish, Paku, 
South American River Ray. They usually have silver arowana, however, that is off exhibit temporarily. But yeah, the big fish in here are the Paku. See a catfish. Oh, and there's the ray at the bottom. Yeah. Our glass is a little cloudy. Okay, the Lake Malawi African Cichlid. Yeah, so cichlids come in a variety of colors and sizes. This tank you got this nice looking eel. See how it breathes. And we got the coral reef tank. Fish we'll see in here. Long spine porcupine fish. Purple tang. Yellow tang. Pavilion grouper. Obble with it, let batfish, probably messed up that up. Uh, big nose unicorn tang. Magnificent rabbit fish. Sailfin tang. Pakistani butterfly fish. Blue tang. Yellow blotched angelfish. Orange spied surgeon fish. Red toothed trigger fish. Blue ring angelfish. And we got a pennant butterfly fish and a five bar flag fish. Ooh, that's pretty colors. Nice blue and yellow. Swimming back. It's always nice to see an aquarium as part of a zoo. Because it's like you're getting two attractions in one. Big rounded tank has a couple sea star. Multiple different types of anemone in here. See them all stuck in a glass as well. Yeah, it sells a fish. There's no signs on this specifying what exactly is in here. But I do see some green anemone, uh, pink anemone. We got a cotton top tamarin. A good sized habitat. Oh, here we go. They're further back. Oh, oh. One of the fuzzies noticed me. One of the fuzzies noticed me. Didn't you want me to go through the doors? There we go. Now we get a nice view of the cotton top tamarin. Man, they are so cute and fuzzy. Yeah, good sized habitat in here. All right, so this big greenhouse looking building is where I just was. I just came out of those double doors. So now we are to the outdoor exhibits. All right, to one of my favorite zoo birds, Chilean flamingos. Oh yeah. Always enjoy seeing the flamingos.
a couple of ducks in there with them too. And yes, the birds have lots of water. They spend a lot of their day up on the dry land. Some on one leg, others just standing around. Kind of looks like they're sleeping. Got North American River Otter. Oh, 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 there we go. Yeah. So imagine these animals got to maintain their fur. Super cute. But yeah, it's a very good looking habitat. Lots of water to be in. All right, so we saw the red painted as indoor habitat. This is their outdoor habitat. So they are just not out yet. Go. I said I'll check back later. All right, is so this the other side exit from the main entrance building? You get strollers and wheelchairs. So there's the pricing for that. All right, we got bald eagle. Very nice looking habitat. Got the one in the tub of water. Having a bath, getting a drink of water. Hello you pretty bird, how are you? Second bird up on the branch. And typically when you see bald eagles at zoos, they are injured and not able to survive out in the wild. So they become ambassador species. You'll see also the national bird of the United States. Very, very pretty birds. All right, so the other side of these trees is the main entrance, the building. There's the bald eagles that I saw. Pavilion where they have school groups right now. So I'm heading here to the left. Got the zoo's carousel. Not just horses, they got some other animals. Oh, out of order zebra, that's not good. Wow, this is really nice. Got all the ape sculptures right here. So this is a very nice looking area. You see some Japanese macaque. Also known as the snow monkeys. That's how they communicate. All right, cool. Oh, interrupted them. Well, that's a very good sized habitat for these animals. All sorts of stuff to keep them entertained. Got rearing young. doing 
Never expect animals to talk back to me, but that doesn't mean I don't be friendly to them. Oh, here we go. Another one in the bottom. Very cute animals. And females rule. Directly across from the macaques, you got Jamaqua Africa, or connection to Africa. Africa, the continent. You see some domestic guinea fowl. And gray crowned crane. Also, Nyala. Alright, so this habitat would have all three of the animals. Here we're not seeing anybody at the moment. Like I said, it is still early. So I will absolutely come back. We got speckled mouse bird and bush thickney. See one of the thickney birds. Now the mouse birds are up along the fence in the back and along the top also. A quarry bustard. Very cool looking bird. I have seen these birds before. I think maybe at one other zoo. And it's a very, very nice looking habitat also for this bird. It's the thing I like about this zoo. So Blank Park Zoo is an AZA accredited facility. So they usually have a higher standard of maintaining the habitats for the animals. Have stuff in the animal habitat for enrichment. More about Africa. Music is very important. Red River Hogs. Also very nice looking habitat. See one of the hogs in the back. You see a little tail going. Want to add some flies or something, probably. Oh, there's another one. I just noticed it. Got a Maasai. Recreation of a Maasai. Got Eastern Black Rhinoceros. Right. Got a camera trap and horns. Just like elephants are hunted for their ivory, rhinos are hunted for their horns. The thing is, what horns, it's made the same thing that our fingernails and hair are made from, which is keratin. There's no medicinal qualities or purposes whatsoever. So because of that, rhinos in the wild are critically endangered. And what does this symbol mean? So following the pathway, you get another good view of the Red River Hog. Very cute pigs. But yeah, these animals have lots of space. A whole bunch of mud to be in. So 
This one's got a nice spot in the mud, partially in the shade. So if something is not done about the poaching, zoos are going to be the only place you're going to see these magnificent animals. Got edX. Go. Got those nice long horns. Very nice looking animals. All right, by the rhinos and the adax are restroom locations. He's taking a nap now. Very nice pathways. Got Prairie Meadows Anniversary Pathway. Got some boardwalk now. Got some akabi. And yellow back duker. Copy. It's like they look kind of like a hodgepodge of different animals. Got the zebra stripes. And they do have a long neck because they are actually related to giraffe. So yellow back duker, I am not seeing. In the back there, in the in the grass somewhere. So perhaps I'll see him on Mary Walk later. So all these names on these plaques represents people that have donated to the zoo. The zoo opened in 1966. Different donation levels. It's very evident when a community supports their zoo. I always suggest if you have a zoo in your community to support it, either through donations or just visiting, letting your friends know about it, that's gonna help bring awareness to the zoo and ensure they have the funding for expansions, remodels, and of course to care for the animals. That's the most important part. All right, we got a reticulated giraffe. Now the giraffe share the exhibit here, the habitat with the adax. Got giraffe footprint. Just like humans, giraffes have seven neck bones and vertebrae. His wagon's tail. Aww. That makes us happy, just like a dog when they wag their tail. It's like, oh my god, this grass is so good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Yep. Happy, happy addicts. All right, so now I see the great crown crane. There we go. This happens to be in a habitat with the Attex and the giraffe. And following the path around, of course, I've come to the zebra. And the zebra are greeting me with their customary pose of their backside. Uh. There we go, it's a little better. Now, I do not wait for these guys to have their back turned to me. It just happens by chance as I walk up to them. The two on the left were kind of uh, playing with each other. All right, so there's no signs out for the zebras. However, I can tell this is a Grevy's zebra because the stripes do not go all the way around. It's got a plain white underside. And that is indicative of the Grevy's zebra variety. 
Mark says, zebras have a very good sized habitat. This goes all the way around. All the way around to here. So that's good size space for these animals. That's one of the many things I actually really, really like about this zoo is the size of the habitats for these animals. I see train tracks. So I'll definitely go on the train. All right, so following the pathway, come to the exit area of Africa. It's right back over by the macaques. So I'm gonna head this way next. So showing the map again, this is the area I just went through. It's the main entrance right here where I came in. So I'm gonna be heading this way next. Still a whole bunch to see. All right, we got restrooms locations right over here. So you can see where I am. This is the exit of the Africa section. Restrooms right here. All right, we got the High V Safari Grill. And this is their menu. All right, so I just got a refillable drink bottle. This was seven dollars. Refills are two dollars. So that's a good deal. So there's plenty of seating outside. So not quite ready for food yet. I will check this out on my rewalk. So it's the other side view of the Japanese macaque habitat. This is right near the, the food stand where I was just at. We've got a juvenile here playing with some sort of toy. All right, so from this area, I'm gonna follow the path. Sue has plenty of benches to sit down and relax, enjoy the ambiance. Garden for native pollinators, including butterflies and bees. So it's a good deal to have type of plants that attract butterflies and bees. Because without pollinators, we don't have food. All right, we got white-handed gibbon. Thought I heard one of these guys hooting and hollering earlier. Let's see if they are threatened. Let's see their habitat. I see them up above here. We've got two scenarius vultures in here in the same habitat as the white-handed gibbon. Just asked one of the staff members, it was just right near here, asked about a sign for these guys and apparently the sign got damaged during a hailstorm they had here recently. I think last week actually. So she was nice enough to tell me which type of vultures they are, because there are several different varieties. So because of the way the sun is right overhead, not going to get quite a good of a view of the white hand gibbon, so uh, when I come back a little bit later, the sun will be changed. Won't be right where it's shining right now. Hopefully we'll get a better look. Got a mer tiger. itch right there. Our washing. So tiger has a very nice habitat. And tigers are one of the few big cats that actually enjoy being in the water. Very cool. Hey there's a tiger. Got a great view. See Blank Park Zoo Conservation. All right, we got African lion. The lion has a very nice habitat.
Got the lioness right here. Wow, she's a big girl. And then you got the big boy male lion. His very fluffy mane. Yeah, big old tail. And they are living up to their name because they are lying around. Ha. Very nice. Very pretty kitty cats. Got Go Go Plaza. We're going to see some harbor seal and California sea lion. Some zooming by. Woo! More information about the California sea lion. Here we got identifying features. They actually, have little ear flaps. They're giving an underwater viewing. Got pinnipeds. So there is a handicap accessible ramp to get to the underwater viewing. Stairs on the other side. More information about the harbor seal. But yeah, this zoo is quite impressive. Got Go Go Plaza snacks. So it's right in front of the seals and sea lions. And this is their menu board. We've got El Dabra tortoise. Information about the Adabra tortoise. Got Barnaby story. Very nice. So I'm going to assume this is Barnaby on the right. Actually, there's a third tortoise over here. Am I a turtle or a tortoise? I got ring-tailed lemur. I also have black and white ruffed lemur. Of course, ring-tailed lemurs are probably the most well-known variety of lemurs. Thanks to the DreamWorks films. I actually like the black and white rough lemur. A little, no, I wouldn't really say better, but these guys are super fuzzy. Super fuzzy. Chris gonna hide from me now. Camera shy. But yeah, so these animals have a nice size habitat. behind the scenes. So yeah, this is their evening habitat. So they have lots of space. 
See where it has in the evening. Got Magellan penguin. Oh wow, they are so cute. Glad you decided to come inside the building. All right, well, so what a mess the penguins. Right behind the snack bar, you got restroom locations. And also around the back is the Magellan Penguin's actual outdoor habitat. So I have two of them inside. Not sure why they are inside, the rest of them are out here. But actually, they have access to come and go as they please. Yeah, the little pathway is open. Those two decide to be inside. Very nice. And they're all shaking off all the water. Also, really nice size habitat for them. They got face painting and airbrush arm tattoos for the little kids. All right, we got the kids' kingdom. What are wetlands? Why are they important? We got Nigerian dwarf goat. We got Lily, Twix, Brenda, Eunice, and Bean. How you doing? Hi, goaty goat. How you doing? What's up? Hi, goaty goat. Can I pet you? Yeah, yeah, he's goaty goat, huh? Yeah. Yeah, lots yeah, of goody goats. Huh? Hi, goody goats. Hi. Got a llama. Llama's name is Dolly. You see Dolly Llama in the back. More goats. And the goat's got a bridge that goes over the walkway so they can get to the other side. They got the Kids Kingdom feeding shack so you can feed the animals. Got these two really nice looking swans. Down below they got koi feeding and duck feeding evidently. <laughs> Ducks are taking advantage. We got some koi feeding instructions. <laughs> oh, look at it come now. Look at it. Oh, 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 buddy. Look at it. Yeah, them ducks are smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, much closer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so koi have access to this huge pond. Oh. So do the ducks. Grab one of those fish, caves. No. Uh. Of course, no kids area will be complete without a playground equipment, you know, a jungle gym, slides and tubes. It's called mule foot hogs. Everybody has their hair cut done. In the cold winter months, they have their long coat. During the hot summer months, they get a nice haircut. And they do have a hand wash station. So if you pet the animals, you want to wash your hands. It's also a good day to wash your hands before touching animals. This right here is the only time I would recommend putting your head inside of a hippopotamus's mouth. It's not a water fountain. Don't stick your head inside one. All right, so show you the map again. Again, this is where I came in. Did all this over here. Saw everything over here. Just came out of the playground area. Koi fishing. Saw the tortoise and the lemurs. So the last area to check out is the Australia Adventure down here in this corner. All right, we got the train station. So 
So I'm gonna get in line and go for a ride. A couple of animals we're only gonna see from the train. Got emu. See the emu. So in addition to the emu, they have Bennett's wallaby over here also. But the emu, you get a really good view. That's just people getting into a train car. So all the wallabies are over there on the other side. I guess you'll see them as we come back into the train station. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. Perfect. My name is Eleanor. I will be your train driver for today. Now before we get started here, I just have a couple of rules. First, please remain seated for the entire ride. Keep your arms, legs, tails, fins, paws, and claws inside the train at all times. And if you drop something, please do not jump out and try to grab it. Just let me know once we get back to the station and I can grab it for you. And with that, we are all ready to go. Alright, so it's gonna be loud in here, folks. It's gonna be 
very loud. Trumpet or swan? She's the same big body of water. Got a much better view of the trumpet or swan from the other side. But you still kind of see him over there. There we go. All right, we got the David Crudner Australian Adventure. Go okay, we got an Eglatus Parrot. A pretty bird. The bird's trying to look up a number. You gonna order some pizza or something? Yeah? <laughs> Hello! Hello! How are you? You're a pretty bird, huh? Yeah, pretty bird? Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Got Australia biomes. Stranded on an island continent. Oh, got Bennett's wallaby. What is the outback? What is the boomerang? What does the didgeridoo? Got Pandora Station. All right.
right, here we go. My absolute favorite type of bird, the kookaburra. Fantastic. Such lovely birds. Such cool looking birds. Just love the way they look. More information about the kookaburra. And the prey of the kookaburra. Kilbera Rock Monitor. Really cute looking. I see there's more than one in here. Very nice looking habitat though. In case you never heard of Vegemite. I have tried Vegemite. I am not a fan of it. From what I understand, it's an acquired taste. Got some Bajagara. That is what they are called in Australia. Of course, these are known as parakeets for Americans, anyway. Most popular pet bird species. Cockatiel. Oh my God. Cockatiel being the next one. Coming in three main color combinations. You got the green, you got the white, and the blue. So wallabies like the cousin kangaroo are marsupials. Got double waddled cassowary. They are a cousin of the emu and ostrich. Also known as the most dangerous bird in the world. Because on their on their legs they got a big giant claw on their center toe. And when felt threatened, they will actually jump and kick with that big claw. Imagine the wound is gonna be devastating. This compare between an emu and a cassowary. And got all of the female wallabies. So I heard from the train. All the males are on the island. And all the females are over here in the Australian section. Well, yeah, you can see a better view of the emu. And you see the train I was on. So the wallabies have free access to room the entire area. Cassowary, however, does not have access to free room because of the information I shared with you. They can be very dangerous. Not the type of bird you want to have walking around with, uh, with people. So a nice expansive area for the wallabies to enjoy. I got another cassowary. I like the little crest they have on their top of their head. More information about the cassowary. See that claw right there in the center. Oh, black swan. Couple ducks. Now all this 
muck looking stuff is actually green algae and it's naturally occurring. It actually only occurs if the body of water is uh, in good health. All right, so I'm back up front, and this concludes my initial walkthrough of the Blank Park Zoo. Very, very cool variety of animals. Um, much more than I was expecting at a smaller zoo. Like I said, it's AZA accredited, and I can tell that it is well maintained and receives funding. Being the only AZA accredited zoo in the state of Iowa, this is a very good destination for people that enjoy animals. Great place to come out if you're in Des Moines with your kids. Like I said, it's a fantastic facility. There was only a few animals that I'd missed or didn't get quite a good of a view the first time. So I'm gonna do a rewalk. I always do a rewalk. And if I don't see the animal the first or second time, I will often come back a third time just to get a glimpse of the animal, hopefully. All right up in the front, you got Critter Corner. I'm not sure they could make a couple different sounds. I haven't. Oh boy. Oh. Is that in the US? Texas? So that would be the, the nine armadillo. A little bit different. Which kind of armadillo is this? He is a six banded. Six banded, okay. Are these, do we have any? No, so these ones are new. Usually I see a three-banded armadillo, so this is actually pretty cool. Armadillo. And they got long-haired armadillos also, right? I believe there is one like that, yeah. Armadillo. Okay. I think there's around 20 different types of armadillos. Oh, okay. I, I don't know all of them, but oh, okay. there's quite a variety of them. Armadillo yeah. Pretty cool. Well, he's 13 years old. Ooh, Burmese star tortoise. Very nice. 13, you said? 13, yep. Wow. Right in his teenage years. Yeah. Take a picture of the armadillo. Can you see it, buddy? like that. How old is the armadillo? There it is. Alright, so showing the map again. I am back here at the main entrance. Gonna go the same way that I went before. Gonna start with the Discovery Center. And check out everything over here and just make a loop around. Hopefully get to see anything that I might have missed the first time. There's only a few. Alright, so the first animal that I missed was the red panda. When I first got here, this was actually the first habitat that I saw. Still don't see them inside. So they might be on the outside habitat. I will check back though. See one of the other pigeons. Came back to the green iguana. Really, really close to the, to the pathway now. Coming from the state of Florida, these guys are very, very invasive in South Florida. People released them, they were escaped from pet stores, just like the the uh, the pythons down the Everglades. These guys are everywhere. All right, Egyptian fruit bats missed this morning. I see them in here flapping around now. And yeah, not the bats. These guys are going batty. Going daddy now. I think bats are cute. They're not scary. Actually, very beneficial to have bats if you have them in your neighborhood because they will eat all the mosquitoes. In case you're wondering what good are mosquitoes, well, they feed bats and other birds and animals that eat insects. Back here at the Dwarf Cayman, 
move just a little bit. So there are no red piranha that are in this habitat because unless these guys are clear, they're not in there. Back at the cotton top to Marin's. So they're both over their little basket. So cute and fuzzy. Back at the otter, playing in the water now. Life in a village. All right, one of the other animals I missed this morning was the Nyala over here in the Africa section. And I do see a Nyala in the back. There's a second one. Nyala kind of resemble one of my other favorite type of animals, the bongo. Because they also have these nice white stripes on their sides. I'm glad I'm getting to see these animals that I missed the first time. Back at the Adax. In giraffe habitat right here. And good views of the edX. See the red river hogs are out. Oh my gosh, and you have some piglets. Oh my gosh, you got some babies in there. You got some babies. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Much better view. And the babies are adorable. One of the other animals I missed the first time through was the yellowback duker and out now. It's a nice lovely yellow stripe. Yeah, copy's smart right there in the shade. Where'd you get those? Because those are the best ones, aren't they? Looks like they had some branches. Majority of the leaves are already gone, so these guys have been over here munching away for a while. A little treat for them. And of course, you got the hay right there. Back at the zebra. Found the peacock and it's the all white one we're talking about on the train. If we're trying to get some food from people, definitely don't want to feed the birds. Back here at the vultures. And these are right in here with the white handed gibbon. Drying off his feathers, looks like, or cooling off. Alright, so the white handed gibbon are actually down. Well, a better view of them anyway. Back at the tiger habitat. With the male right here on the big rock. It's a big one. Oh. Such a fantastic animal. A chipmunk. Yeah. There's a kid being mean to you, making noises at you. I know, I know. He's gone now. Okay? You doing? Do you doing all right? I'm sorry, people are mean to you sometimes. That was really cool. Hey, monk. 
Hey, come here, sing me a song real quick. Can you sing me a song? No? Oh, boy, I thought you were Alvin, I'm sorry. Came back to the Magellan Penguins and they're all playing in the water now. They're all kind of diving under the water. I saw a whole bunch of them and all of a sudden they disappeared. They're underwater. Came back to show you Dalai Lama. Kind of missed a good view of her last time. Yep. Kind of laying down, chilling out now. Also missed a miniature donkey this morning when I came through. Miniature donkey is out here now. Hey, down, sir. Enjoying a nice snack. All right, so I came back to the Red Panda Outdoor Habitat. Still did not see the Red Panda. It doesn't look like the little doorway is open. I'm gonna go inside one more time. Hopefully get to see him. All right, so this is my third and final time back at the Red Panda Habitat. And it actually doesn't look like it's even gonna get out here in the habitat today because this food dish looks exactly the same as it was when it first opened. So Red Panda is going to be in between, right there in the back. So I'm sure everybody's seen Red Pandas. So unfortunately, Red Panda is a no-go. I did try. All right, heading to the exit. Going to show you a brief overview of the gift shop. All right, so this is the same gift shop where I got my hat when I first got here. We got shirts. This is right where I got my hat. So we got other assorted things that you would expect to see in a gift shop. Lots of plush. Backpacks, we got mugs and cups. Like I said, a whole bunch of different plush. I also have a lot of educational books, activity books, puzzles. The zoos are very popular with kids. So the majority of the gift shop is geared towards the kids, of course. Also have kid size shirts and kid size hats. This is all I saw when I first came in here. It's lots more plush. This is cute. These animals have the little Blank Park Zoo shirts on. Or sweatshirts. And you got little baby shirts. And they do have magnets. Typically at a zoo if I don't get a, a hat. I'll get a magnet because some zoos don't have hats for adults and occasionally I don't have the money for a hat but I can get a magnet but since I got my hat I don't need to get anything else just want to show you all right everybody that is gonna do it from my visit to the Blank Park Zoo in Des Moines Iowa I had a fantastic time saw everything except the red panda the piranha and I think some of the birds I get pretty lucky on seeing everything else that I missed or didn't get quite a good view the first time through I always recommend you go to a zoo to come back several times if necessary if you don't see it the first time through just to save yourself a little bit of time afterwards if there's something that you really want to see go back chances are you will get a chance to see the animal unless they're out of the habitat for some reason Occasionally animals are behind the scenes, off habitat for various reasons, for sicknesses, or they have a health checkup, renovating the habitat, so forth and so on. So anyway, leave some comments down below what your favorite zoo animal was that I saw today. Leave some other comments. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I go to zoos like this, aquariums, amusement parks, theme parks, 
roadside attractions, state parks, local parks, all sorts of stuff in between all over the country. Upload new videos every Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.